Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to make some pillowcases. Now, whenever we make a quilt to give to someone, we almost always make pillowcases to match because the recipient might not have any pillowcases or sheets that look good with the quilt you're giving them. They might have printed pillowcases and then here comes your quilt and their pillowcases just look really icky with it. So I'm going to show you a simple version of a pillowcase, then we're going to add a little bit of an accent, and then we're going to make an even fancier one. So this way, whoever you're giving it to, they don't necessarily have to use these when they sleep. They can put extra pillows in them and they can cover up their sleeping pillows. Because a lot of people, like myself, are really picky about the type of pillow we sleep with, but I still want to have something pretty on my bed that matches the quilt. We also make a lot of pillowcases to give to kids, and I have young grandchildren, and their interests are always changing. So they might be interested in soccer balls right now, and a year from now they might be interested in cats. And so I don't want to spend a long time making a fancy pillowcase. I want to make a very simple pillowcase that matches their interests right now, and when those interests change, I can make them a new pillowcase really quickly. So let's go take a look at some of the quilts we've made and pick out some fabrics that will match those quilts so we can make some nice pillowcases. The first pillowcase we're gonna make is going to be a kid's pillowcase. We just need to pick out one fabric we like a lot and we're not going to add any accents, it's just going to be one cute fabric. So let's go find one. We have so many fun fabrics to make kid's pillowcases. I absolutely love the monkeys. One thing you have to remember is your pillowcase is going to be made from yardage that goes like this. This one looks a little bit sideways. The giraffes could be laying down sideways. So you want to get a pattern that's not real one way because it doesn't look as good. Um, we have, again, really cute cowgirl fabric, but they are all going to be sideways. So this would not be a real good one to make a pillowcase out of. Always fun sock monkeys. Now, this is going the right way. So I'm gonna make one out of this. That is just gonna be really, really a happy pillowcase. Now to match to a specific quilt, I'm going to pick some of the fabrics that are in it. So we have this beautiful abundance quilt and it's pretty busy. So we wanna pick something that will look good but won't fight with the patchwork. So let's go over to this section of the fabrics and we'll pull a couple out and see what they look like. We have a lot of prints that would work that are in it. So I'm gonna take some of these over and see which looks best up against the quilt. We just love all the K-Facet prints and these would all make nice pillowcases, but I really think that's gonna be a little bit too busy this is the darker print, and that actually would work. I like it. But I think that this one actually fights the least with the quilt. So I'm gonna use this for the body of the pillowcase. Then I'm gonna do a small section of this on the edge, and right between them, we're gonna pick out a reddish pinky print that'll go right in the middle and that'll just give it a little bit of accent to look really nice. So what I want to pick is something that will look good with both of these fabrics, something that'll go right in the middle. So it's going to have to be kind of a pinkish red. And these are batiks from K Facet. So I'm going to pick a batik that will go in the middle. And I think I'm going to go with that one. So I'm going to just sandwich it in here. And yeah, that looks really good. We're only gonna see a little teeny bit of it, but it does have to match well, and that is just perfect. The last pillowcase we're gonna make is gonna match this pretty radiant quilt that I made recently. Now, this is a little bit trickier. I have a lot of fabrics here that match. This is what I used for the binding, but it really looks too busy. Of course, I could just do some plain peach ones. That would be very calm, and I might do that. 
I thought I might like this, but it just looks like too much color. What I think I will do is, I have some extra blocks left from the patchwork. I think I have about 12 blocks left, so I'm gonna take six of them, and we will make either a pillow cover or a pillow sham, and we'll use some of this as an accent color on that, and I think that's really going to enhance this quilt the best. So let's get all our fabrics, and then I'll show you how to make the pillowcases. First thing we need to do is to figure out how big to cut the pillowcase. Here's the sizes of the pillow. So a standard pillow is 20 by 26 inches. A queen, it's 30 inches. And a king, it's 36 inches. So I like to cut the pillowcase. I'm gonna to wanna to cut it about 41 inches. Sometimes you can only get 40, but we're gonna to have to put a seam in there. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be about 41 because that's gonna fold over. And then I like to add about nine inches to this length. So that's gonna be 35 inches. Same thing here, we're gonna do 41 by 39 if we're making a big pillow, 41 by 45. So I'm just gonna make the standard size right now. I'm just gonna be working with this. So I need a little more than a yard. If you buy a yard, you can make a plain pillow easily. To make this simplest pillowcase, I just need a about a yard. Now, pillowcases are the one item that I often wash before I make it. I don't pre-wash my quilting fabric. I like to work with fabric that has not been pre-washed, but pillowcases are always going to get washed. You can either wash it now before you make it or do like I'm going to do. I'm going to steam press it really, really flat. When it's all done, I'm going to wash it before I actually give it as a gift. So I'm going to straighten this out and steam press it nice and flat. So it already looks kind of pillowcase shaped. We're going to get our 41 inches this way and we're going to get our 35 inches this way. The easiest way for me to cut this exactly to 35 inches is to fold it in half. And then I'm gonna measure over half of the 35, which is 17 and a half inches. So I'm gonna put this on a line, make sure everything is lined up, measure over 17 and a half inches. and then cut all four layers all at once. Now I'm just gonna turn my cutting board and I'm going to measure up 21 inches, which is right there, and I'm going to cut it here. And I'm actually gonna have 42 inches total on this. So you could cut it a little smaller if you want, but it's a little easier to get onto your pillow if you have enough width if you can cut it 42. Now I'm gonna take this to the ironing board. This is gonna be the side, this is gonna be the opening, so we're gonna to wanna to iron some of this back. So this is the edge I'm gonna iron with. And I find it, it's a lot easier to iron it now. Then we will sew it pillowcase shaped, and then we will do the last stitching here. So I'm going to turn this back four inches. So I'm going to use my plastic ruler to measure four inches and then I'm going to iron it. So I've got four inches turned back here all the way along the edge. I'm going to iron it. Now I'm going to open this up and I'm going to press one half inch back. And I'm just gonna eye it up because I've done this a lot, but you can measure if you want. So you wanna iron this edge, but you don't wanna re-iron over this fold that you put in there because that will make it real easy to fold in that exact spot when we're done. 
So here's the pillowcase. This is gonna be our part that's folded under. This is gonna be the opening. So to stitch this together, I want all of my raw edges to be completely enclosed. So I am gonna stitch this along this long edge and the short edge, but I'm gonna stitch it with wrong sides together first. Then after that's done, I'm gonna turn it and stitch it right sides together. So we won't have any raw edge fabric showing at all. So I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam here. I'm gonna pivot at the corner here and stitch all the way to the end. Now I'm gonna trim just a little bit of this corner off and a little bit of this corner off. And then I'm gonna turn the pillowcase inside out. And I'm gonna poke these corners out nice and square. And I'm gonna flatten this seam out. So I'm basically going to finger press this seam to one side just so I have it nice and flat. Because what I'm gonna do is I am going to put this right sides together now and I'm gonna stitch. And then I'm gonna catch all of that raw stuff inside this seam so we will have no exposed edges. Here's my seam allowance. I'm going to fold this right here with the seam allow with the seam right on the edge and now I'm going to stitch down here slightly larger than a quarter inch away and then all of the raw edges will be enclosed inside this seam. So no matter how many times this pillowcase gets washed nothing will fray out. Now if you have a serger or an overlock machine, you can do this seam on that instead of doing this fancy seam. But one way or the other, you want all of the raw edges not fraying. And this is a perfect way to do it. Stitch all the way to the end. And you do want to back tack there so that your stitching won't come out. Now I'm going to leave this inside out, turn it around here to where this part is. And I'm going to fold this part back right along those parts where we ironed. I mean, it's already ironed, so it's gonna turn pretty easily. And we're going to tuck this down. This is the half inch we ironed under, and I'm gonna put a few pins in, so I'm gonna flatten it out and get some pins in, and then we're gonna stitch all the way around here. And I think it's actually going to be a little bit easier if I turn it right side out. So it'll be a little bit easier to stitch it from this edge. Now all we need to do is stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge here. Where this seam is, I made sure that I finger pressed it nice and flat so it's nice and flat on both sides and we don't have any extra bulk there. So that's all there is to making this first easy pillowcase. We've got the nice wide hem here. It's nice and flat. We've got Superman sock monkey. So this is the quickest one. Now let's move on to our second pillowcase, which has just a little bit of what we would call an upgrade. I have the pieces ironed and cut for the pillowcase to match the cave facet quilt. Now this top is 27 inches long. And my little accent piece is an inch and a half. And the end here, which is going to be folded, is eight and a half inches. So the first thing I'm going to do is sew everything into a tube. Then we will attach the tubes together. And then we won't have any raw edges showing again. Since I own a little mini serger here, or an overlock machine, I'm going to go ahead and use that machine this time. Of course, you can still do the other method where we sewed the seam one way, then sewed the seam the other way. But this is really fast.
stitched in a tube in these cases here and this one we stitched the side and the bottom so now we're going to turn everything right side out and we're going to finger press it just a little bit so that our seam is flattened out here this little piece here is going to get folded in half wrong sides together. So I'm just going to make those raw edges meet and press it. This piece is also going to get folded in half. So it's best if you start here on the seam so that you can make sure those seams line up and you're folding it in half without having it pulled or distorted. Then start ironing and then work your way all the way around the circle. Now I'm going to put the little accent all the way around the edge of the pillowcase with the raw edges even, and I'm going to pin it in place. And I put my seam here a little bit away from this one so that I don't get too much bulk right there because we're also going to be pinning this part on top. So you can put them near, but they don't have to match up completely. So once you have this pinned all the way around, you put one more pin in here. Now we're going to take this one and we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to slide it over and I'm going to match up all the edges. I'm going to put the seam down here near this one so we don't get too much bulk and I'm going to pin it all the way around and then we're going to take it to the machine and sew. Now I'm going to use a real careful 3 8 inch seam and I'm going to stitch right along the edge here. I turned the whole pillowcase back inside out because it's just easier for me to stitch from this side because that's where my pins were. So you want to sew it nice and straight so that your little accent will look very accurate. So I'm going to do about a 3 8 inch seam and I'm going to go all the way around. Now you can do this right on your serger, but I find it's a little bit more accurate if I sew on here first and then go to the serger. Now I'm back on the serger and I'm just going to serge this edge so that we have no fraying there. Now this is actually completely done if we want, or we can add a little bit of top stitching, which I like. So look how nice that looks there. Now I like to have a row of top stitching right here because it will keep this nice and flat. So I'm going to turn it back inside out because it's easier to stitch from the inside. And I'm going to use nice matching thread and I'm just going to hold this open, hold it open like that and I'm just going to stitch right here near the edge. This is a very happy pillowcase. I just love the little accent here. Really, really fun and quick. Now, I know that everyone does not have a serger, so let me show you an alternate method to cover up your seam, your um, raw edges here if you don't have a serger. You would take your big accent piece and you would iron under 3 eighths of an inch here if that's the seam allowance you're going to use when you stitch it on. And then when, you, when we stitched this onto the pillowcase, we would just stitch this one layer on to here, and then we would turn this around and this part would come inside and it would cover up the raw edges back there. And then when you top stitched like I did here, that would catch that part right there. The third pillowcase we're going to make is actually going to be a pillow sham. And I'm gonna make this with extra patchwork blocks. So many times when you make a quilt, you have leftover patchwork blocks. So what you need to do is take those blocks, lay them out, in a pleasing fashion and then add borders perhaps on the top and bottom maybe on the sides maybe even in the middle so that the top of your pillow is the same size as the stuffed pillow that's going to go in it so i'm going to sew all these together and i'm going to line the patchwork 
and then I'm going to put a back on it and then I'll show you what it looks like. So all I did was stitch the top into a big flat piece and I've got it on a lining here and I'm just stay stitching all the way around the edge. To put the backing on, I've got a full width of yardage here. So this is the whole 45 inch pieces that came off the bolt and these are the selvages. All I did was split it right along the fold and so I'm going to take one half of it here and I'm going to turn back about four inches right in the middle. Then I'm going to take the other half where the selvage was and I'm going to make those selvage edges neat. I don't have to hem anything here because it's a selvage edge and it's not going to come, um, it's not going to fray or anything. Now I'm just going to pin this and then I'm going to stitch everything front to back from this side here. I'm going to just go right inside my previous stitching line all the way around and then I'm going to trim off the excess and we'll flip it through the opening here and it'll be done. This is really one of the quickest pillow covers you can make. Here's the Radiance pillow cover or pillow sham. Look how nice that looks with the quilt. Now, I might not actually sleep on this one. I might just use it for decoration because it has a lot of seams in it. And it has the opening in the back here that I told you about. So you can still take your pillow in and out to wash it very easily. And this one was really fun. So anytime you have those extra blocks, you can put together pillowcase, pillow cover. This one was really fun too. And look how nice it looks against the quilt. It's just bright, it's cheerful, and the batiks are really comfortable to sleep on. And you can wash them repeatedly. They'll look exactly like this. I love the little teeny accent here. Just a little touch. Love the stripe. So that is really a fun one as well. And here's the simplest pillowcase with the sock monkeys. Really quick, so much fun to make. So I hope that that gives you lots of ideas for making your own pillowcases. Happy quilting.